Well, it's actually looking sort of like it might get nice at some point. It's kind of cloudy still, though. It was raining cats and dogs and uh, gale force winds earlier while I was out doing hill sprints, of course. Um, the guy with the hedge trimmer down there is making me nuts. He's been doing this now for about five hours. So we're going to go in so I can't hear him. <laughs> anyway, tis the season, right? Trim hedges. Uh, anyway, I went to a, um, a little uh, nutrition talk a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it's taken me a while to get it out just because it's uh, pretty long and it's going to take some editing. But um, I got uh, went with my, the place I go quite a bit, uh, my friends at InfoFit, and um, they had a special speaker that day, and uh, she had quite a bit to talk about about uh, the liver, uh, the li liver function, uh, eating for your liver, and um, and belly fat and what your liver has to do with belly fat and I thought it was really 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 informative so rather than cut the whole thing out or cut the whole thing down into a uh, quick 10 minutes that you know YouTube allows uh, I got special permission from Andre the head of InfoFit uh, to share the whole thing with you guys this time uh, they really really do have some really informative interesting talks uh, in InfoFit so if you're in my area uh, here in Vancouver definitely uh, take a look at their website and check them out um, because they might have some talks coming up that you might want to attend uh, just for your own information because they really do give out uh, some really, really, you know, informative talks and have some interesting speakers. So um, enough, en enough ado, uh, I'm, going to, uh, I'm going to just go ahead and splice into it now and play it for you. It's going to be several videos because of the YouTube constraints. Uh, so, you know, when you get to the end, just go to down, down to the next one and click play and it'll continue along. Uh, be a bit of a continu continuation, probably be three or four, wind up being three or four videos once it's all done. Uh, but listen to it all because if you're at all interested in uh, ways to cut belly fat um, or ways to eat, he you know, for good health, then you, you really want to listen to this. You really, really do. So here we go. Why uh, the liver is such an important organ. When you're eating healthy, the liver will flourish. When you're not eating healthy, the liver will not flourish. So let's start. So it's not just about what you're eating, it's also the way in which you eat. If you're constantly eating on the run, or if you're you know, eating breakfast in the car every single day, all of these things have an impact on your physiology, on your body. And whenever you are eating, how is it affecting the way you're feeling? If you're in a rush when you're eating, is your heart racing? Or are you, you know, a little bit stressed that you're having to eat and then you have to run off to work, or then you have to run off pick up the kids, or whatever it is that you have to do? So it's not just a question of what it is that you're eating, it's also how in the way in which that you actually eat will also affect you and your body. So anytime you need to think of something and you feel like, okay, I have to do this better, or this is my goal that I need to make it for myself, change is very difficult. As a, as a human, we, we like to do things our way. And when we have to change something, it's not easy by any means. So what I always like to tell people is remember the 21 day rule, which I'm sure you all know, which is it takes 21 days to actually change something about yourself. So if you're, that's okay. If you're someone that, um, let's say, just never eats breakfast and just uh, tends to just have that cup of coffee in the morning and you just, you just feel nauseous or you just don't feel good, I hear that a lot. So one of the things to remember is that if for 21 days solid, you can consistently start eating something small in the morning and you will find over that course of those 21 days, it's going to become that much easier for you to actually eat something in the morning. And I find that as human beings, individuals, when we are motivated, when you want to do something, there is nothing that can stop you except your own mind. So you tell yourself, this is what I want to do. This is the path that you want to take. No matter what happens around you, you have that capability of changing. But just remember to be nice to yourself. And Way. So, what are we going to eat though? So diet, we've all heard this a million times, diet can prevent disease. Diet has the ability to make sure that you don't get diabetes. But remember, it's not a cure-all either. There is, you know, we're humans at the end of the day. So if you're going to go out and have that minimally processed food once in a while, it's not a big deal. So just remember that for your own self that it's not about really the counting of the calories. So if you're one that always counts calories constantly, what is it that you're actually trying to achieve? What is it that you're actually feeling for your own body, for your own self? What I like to, um, you know, instigate or educate people on, it's not uh, to just balance everything out. When you're eating, you want to eat right, but don't focus that, that on the food all the time. 
Maybe one day a week go vegetarian, don't have any meat whatsoever. Maybe another day of the week, pick that day, you have fish once a week. Or, and always vary your fruits and your vegetables. So always looking at the seasons typically, at the, this time of year. Well, like someone's really here yet, but it's getting there. We're gonna see more and more different colors of fruits and vegetables around. And at the times that we don't have those same colors, it's a good idea to maybe during the summer months when you do have all these different options of fruits and vegetables, maybe you freeze them on your own instead of buying the frozen stuff during the winter months. So always varying your fruits and vegetables, varying your vegetarian intake or your fish, and just remember that the better that you do for you will benefit you in the long run. And exercise, we know this, all of you are personal trainers, almost all of you. And you know that exercise can ward off so many different diseases. You know it will improve your muscle mass. You know that it, that it has so many benefits for you. But the key I find to exercising with so many patients is, is the consistency. And it's something that you like to do. If you're someone that hates going to the gym, then don't go. Then you find something that is going to get your heart rate up. So find something that's going to get you motivated to get outside. And if you're one that loves to go for a walk, then you go for that walk every single day. If you're someone that loves to get on the mountain and love to hike, that is part of us, but then you do something that you actually enjoy. That alone will help you be consistent. Because if you're doing something that you really hate, what are the chances you're actually going to do it for 21 days? It's slumped to nothing. No? Agree? No? Agree! Okay, that's great. Thank you. And the other part of this whole saga is to enjoy your life. It's not just about the eating, it's not just about the exercising, just even being. That I, I know a lot of people that are so serious about their diet and exercise, that's all they think about, that's all they breathe every single day. But then they forget that it's okay um, to go out with their friends, you know, once in a while. I've seen many people where they're just so dead set against having to do that exercise because they know it's going to benefit them. But they forget about parties, they don't go visit their friends as often, or they are, you know, will not take that vacation, or they will not spend that time with, you know, their family or people that they want, want to be with because they're so focused on just doing the diet and the exercise, or just doing, they're, they're um, too serious when it comes to food. So, but if you surround yourself with people that you like, and you actually go to parties, and you actually, you know, socialize, as human beings, we're social individuals. It's not just about exercising by ourselves, or, or eating by ourselves. You go and enjoy your life, all, everything tends to fall into place. So what's my actual point? <laughs> it's not just eating, but you're, when you're eating right, you're also healing internally. You're, your physiology is changing as you're eating, and the way in which you're eating, your physiology is changing. And we go through different waves of stresses in our life, depending on where you are in your lifetime, in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, or whatever. Depending on where you are, you'll go through different phases of your life. And when you do go through these different phases, your stress levels themselves will change. And when your stress levels change, the load on your liver will change. So for example, as you're a little baby, when you're constantly breastfeeding, the load on that liver is huge because that little baby has to convert all that billy rumen that has just been exposed to. In your 20s, you tend to party a lot, drink, whatever you need to do. Your liver again has a nice big load on there. And then when you get into this work world and all you're doing is working, 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 you don't have time for exercising. That is a different load on your physical liver. So what I'm going to talk about is liver and how it is the most important organ in your body, outside of the heart, of course. And it is the one that will manufacture anything for you. If the liver does not work, like your heart's heart stop pumping, you're dead. Liver is the second most important there. If the liver is not able to break down food for you, if the liver is not able to process any drugs, stuff that you do take regularly, it is going to cause a huge havoc in your body. So no matter how well you eat, this is an organ you always want to make sure is working at its tip-top shape. So did you know the liver is one that can actually self-regulate? You can cut off a chunk of your liver and it will regrow. That is the coolest thing. There's no other organ in our body that can actually do that. So it can lose actually three quarters of the cells before it will actually stop functioning, which is huge when you consider how big this liver is. Everyone knows what the liver is, right? You're right underneath it. You want that dozen? Andre? It's just saw the pictures. On the right side. So it can grow itself back. So you can see the importance of that beautiful organ. And it has more than 500 functions that have been shown to that the liver actually does for you. 
So one of the, the three top most important for me, I think, as a practitioner is the liver will store for you extra sugar. So if you are diabetic or if you have that tendency towards diabetes or if you do have that type of lifestyle that potentially your blood sugar is high, you will see deposits of glucose in your liver that, are, that goes beyond what is normal. It, the liver is also responsible for um, maintaining your blood sugar levels. So it is our pancreas, yes, that releases our insulin and our glucagon for us that helps balance that, but it's the liver that makes sure that, that we process those hormones correctly. So estrogen is another example. For women that have high, high levels of estrogen, you want to look at the function. Liver is the one that metabolizes estrogen for you. When you look at thyroid hormone, thyroid is your active hormone. It gets you your body's basal metabolic energy. It, it gives you your you know, ability to be motivated. It, it's your antidepressant, your thyroid. Liver is the one that converts the inactive into the active thyroid. So that's just a couple of examples of the importance of our liver. So again, the liver stores for us sugar. So when we need it during exercise or just during uh, any activity we are required to have glucose, the liver will then uh, flush out glucose for us so we can actually use it as, a, as energy. But it's also very important in storing for us our fat-soluble vitamins. So those are the ones that can build up in our fat, but the liver is the one that actually houses them. So when we need them, it's the one that flushes them out for us. So A, D, E, and P are fat-soluble. But the other two that it also works with the bone marrow is B12 and folic acid. So when our bone marrow makes red blood cells for us, it signals the liver that, listen, we need B12 and folic acid. So the liver will then flush that out for the bone marrow to use to make red blood cells. Not neat. <laughs> so minerals, copper and iron. So again, when we are needing things for our heart, when we need to make sure that our kidneys are functioning properly, Mineral, uh, your copper and iron are one of the most important minerals there as well. So liver again is responsible for that. To make sure when, we, when our bodies require, when we are exercising a lot, we require extra iron. It's our liver that makes sure that it will house the extra iron and give it to us when we absolutely need it. So the liver also, for us, will purify, it will transform, and it will clear all those toxins in our body. So when, we're, uh, ex when we are exposed to environmental toxins, such as you, you know, you're know you behind a bus that just excreted all the exhaust for you and you happen to breathe it all in, it is your liver, not necessarily the lungs, but the liver that makes sure all those carbon monoxide, all that byproduct of what you've just breathed in, it's the liver that has to go and clear it out of your body. And then again, as I've seen before, about metabolizing hormones, almost every single hormone in our body is actually metabolized by our liver. What I mean by that is your, your body, your liver is the one that will break down estrogen for you into, into, different, um, into different components in which our body is able to use. So estrogen, for example, estradiol is the one that, as a, if you're a female, you are menstruating, estradiol is the one that makes sure that you are menstruating regularly. Liver makes sure that it converts the estrogen for you into the estradiol so you're able to menstruate. So, so when the liver 